So more on limited, limited infinity. Some leftover. One family of functions uh, that uh, we can, uh, we need to, to look. So look at this example and let's evaluate the following limit. And uh, break it down into um, four parts. The first one, we look at the limit of e to the x as x goes to infinity. Tell you what, let's do to save room, let's do plus or minus infinity. Having in mind uh, that there may be difference between positive infinity and negative infinity. Okay. Um, second, let's see what happened when we evaluate the limit of e to the negative x when x approaches plus or minus infinity. Same, same thing. We need to look at uh, <coughs> both. We need to look separately at positive infinity and, and negative infinity. Then <coughs> let's look at uh, the following: c, the limit of uh, 1 over e to the x as x approaches plus or minus infinity and then d the limit of 1 over e to the negative x as x goes to positive or negative infinity. So those are the four cases that uh, we need to uh, analyze or evaluate. It would be a good idea before we go on and look, uh, try to figure out the values of the limit, uh, sketch the, the, the graph of both e to the x and e to the negative x. As one is a growth and the other is a decay. Go ahead. Um, on your infinity sign, you have plus and negative. Uh, is that the same as infinity sign plus plus sign? Or do like when we're talking about limits, when we say the limit of two, that usually means the limit from the right and left. Plus it's not the same. Okay. Because infinity, if you think about x goes to positive infinity, x goes to the far right. When you're talking about x goes to negative infinity, x goes to the far left. So they're not about the same point. When we are looking at x approaches two, we can say, yeah, we can approach two from the left, so that will be x approaches two minus or x approaches 2 from the right, that would be x approaches 2 plus, but we approach to the, po the same value too. Positive and negative infinity are the opposite ends of the universe, so to speak. Okay. All right, so the, the sketch of uh, these two graphs, uh, let's see, think about e to the x. e to the positive x is a growth function, as you recall. Uh, it's exponential growth. When x equals 0, then e to the 0 is 1. So we know that the function is going to uh, cross the y-intercept at, at 0, 1. And it's going to grow up like so, exponentially. Okay? When x is a very large negative number, then, or let's say x equals negative 1, small negative number, then you have e to the negative 1, which is the same as 1 over e. So if e is 2.7 something, 1 over 2.7 is a fraction. So we go below 1, and as x becomes larger negative number, let's say negative 10, then e to the negative 10 is 1 over e to the 10. Now, e to the 10 is an enormous number to the 10 power. So it pretty practically goes to 0, and indeed, this function is a Horizontal asymptote uh, at x goes to negative infinity. So the horizontal, it's a one-sided asymptote. It's only on the left side. So y equals 0, e to, the, e to the x approaches 0 as x approaches negative infinity. What about the, the counterpart? What about e to the negative x? Well, this is a decay, with a decay rate being negative 1. So again, at, when x equals 0, e to the negative 0 is still 1. So we have the same y-intercept. When x is a positive, it's a large number, a positive number. Let's say uh, x equals one. Let's start with a small, 
relatively small uh, positive number. Then e to the 1 is 2 point, uh, I'm sorry, e to the negative 1 is 1 over e to the 1 or 1 over 2.7 something. So it's a fraction. When, when x equals 100, then uh, e to the negative 100 is 1 over e to the 100. Again, a number close to 0. So here we have a positive, an asymptote at x, as x approaches negative infinity. So this is a decay. So here we go. This is y equals e to the x, and this is y equals e to the negative x. Okay, so this gives you an idea. So just by looking at it, we get the answer to the first, uh, to a and b. Okay, from here we get that the limit of e to the x, as x approaches, po uh, let's say, negative infinity, you start with the negative one, then y goes to zero, and it'll be zero plus if you want to be fine about it, right? And <clears throat> I'm s when we're looking at e to the x, when, when x approaches negative infinity, on the other hand, the limit of e to the x when x approaches positive infinity, well, this thing is going up exponentially, so it will be positive infinity, like so. So we have a horizontal asymptote when x goes to negative infinity. Then it, it blows up, or it goes to infinity when x goes to positive infinity. And that would be this end. Okay? What about B, well, that would be the opposite, isn't it? For part B, we are looking at um, the limit of e to the negative x as x goes to negative infinity. Again, I'm looking at this end, and I see when x is a large negative number, then we have e to the negative of a negative number, so it becomes e to the positive number, and this thing will blow up or will go to positive infinity. On the other hand, <coughs> if x is a positive number, then the limit of e to the negative x will go to zero again from the plus side, as we can see on this end of this curve. Okay? So now we go into two graphs that we didn't I didn't uh, <clears throat> sketch, but really, should I sketch the two, the next two? Exactly. It's a repetition, really, because, as you said, the limit of as x approaches plus or minus infinity of e of 1 over e to the x is the same as the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of e to the negative x. So this is the same same as as b. And we already answered b, so we can stop right there. <clears throat> Likewise, if I'm looking at d, the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of 1 over e to the negative x, it's the same as the limit, and I'll be a little bit uh, formal here, okay? It's the same as e to the negative negative x, like so. <coughs> okay, I'm just following the rule of exponentials, just to remind you, I, and this will be the limit of e to the x as x approaches positive infinity, and this is really the same is it's part A. So we already answer C and D. <clears throat> now those those uh, functions are pretty important. Um, so that's that's why I I, uh, I decided to go ahead and, and uh, play with it a little bit. I want to just follow up with an example here. Okay. Example that related to this, uh, these limits. So here comes the example. 
In this example, we want to evaluate the limit as x approaches to positive infinity of the function uh, e to the 3 over x, like so. Okay. So this is pretty similar to what we have here, but with a little uh, twist to it, the exponent, instead of being x or negative x or something like that, it's 3 over x. So what do we do here? Well, uh, we had a theorem when we looked at the limits, and when we discussed limits of composition, if you recall, we, uh, we had a little theorem or law. So let me start by recalling. Let's recall this theorem. Recall the following theorem of uh, or on on a limit of a composition. Because if you look at this, this will be a composition, right? Uh, f will be e to the x and g will be 3 over x so this is composition f composition g of x okay and we said that the limit this is the uh, the theorem or the law if you want the limit as x approaches a of a composition f composition g of x like so I'll write it in a, in a nested parenthesis form it's equals to f we'll take the outside function and the input or the argument of this outside function will be the limit of the inside function. So it will be the limit as x approaches a of a g of x, like so. Whew, how many parentheses I have here? Okay. So, <clears throat> so here we go. We let, in this case, we let g of x, the inside function, be 3 over x, and therefore, uh, actually here, we'll say the limit as x approaches, uh, we want infinity, so as x approaches infinity of 3 over x is 0, right? One of the things that we always look is to have x or x squared or x cubed or x to the power in the denominator. So we have that. And now f of x, <coughs> f is e to the g, right? So now we look at the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the g of x is the same as uh, Again, I used the used by the theorem by the theorem it will be e raised to the power of the limit of g of x as x approaches infinity. You see how I'm using the theorem? The outside function is f or e to the power of. So it says here the limit of the composition is the outside function. Uh, when the input to the add function uh, function is the limit of the input function g, so um, e to the g, the limit of e to the g is e to the limit of g, and now I know that the limit of g is zero, so it's equals to uh, e to the zero or one, and with that we evaluated this limit. <clears throat> 